name is Aqing, meaning the sun. I was born on January, and it was extremely hotter than this month. My mother said that they would sleep hungry many times because there was no food then. It reached a time when they could go to the swamps and pick all the necessary leaves around to cook, and that was a meal. So my standing here is to talk about the rural Uganda and rural girls and women in Uganda. I'm very, very passionate about the education and empowerment of rural Ugandan girls and women. At the age of 14, I was a barmaid in my village. Not this bar in Kampala, but this mud and whatever, you know. And you serve drunkards from as early as 5 a.m. They come to knock, they want to drink. And you sleep at 3 a.m. because the last one has to go. And why was I doing that? I was looking for school fees to go to school. I did that for a year and it was terrible experience ever that I would never ever wish for any girl in this country to go through. My mother struggled a lot to educate me and when I got to senior four, there was no longer money to take me to school. So I had to sit home for more two years and see if magic would work out and I would go to school. That failed. And then my cousin had a contact of an American woman and she told me, Beatrice, why don't you try and write to this Becky Howard? I said, okay. Then I, I wrote to her a letter and I posted it in 2000. The reply came back in January 2001 that Beatrice, I, I of course explained to her my situation. I liked, no, I liked anyone to support my education. I was very passionate. I want to go to school, but there's no one to help. So Becky said, Beatrice, I'm ready to support you in any way possible. So um, when I received that letter, it was the biggest miracle ever in my life. And I said, I'm going to achieve my dream, and that was education. Becky and her family, her husband, Jim, and uh, the sister, Shelby, and the younger girl who was only 10, Lindsay, they supported my education from senior five until I finished senior six, and I joined Macquarie University doing information technology. When I went to Macquarie, I went under a scholarship called Carnegie. And when I joined Carnegie, it was a full support. But then some uh, uh, wrong people went and uh, told the people in Macquarie that, look, this girl comes from a rich family. Why do you support her? They sucked me out. I suffered, I suffered than never before. They were chasing me from uh, the exam room. They were chasing me from the hostel. I had no food. I was totally lost. I went back and slept in the computer lab, begging for Becky and the family to help me, educate me. They told me, Beatrice, now you can go home. Uh, we shall take you to a tailoring course so that you learn how to sew clothes. I said, no, that's not my dream. Help me uh, find any people possible and educate me. I'll make the best use of my education. If possible, I can even pay you back after. Then um, we, we had an exam, and the day before that, the exam, they said, if you haven't paid full tuition, we're going to throw you out. And so I told her to help me, and she asked me to go to the uh, dean and explain my case. So I went and explained, and the, case, the dean said, put that in writing. And I put that, I said, the, uh, my, my sponsor said, allow me to sit for exams today. They're going to send the money next week. And he said, okay. He, he stamped and said, allow her to sit her exams. That was another big miracle in my life. I did my exams. I had no retakes. And people who were there full time had retakes. What am I trying to mean? <laughs> I have passion, even as I talk to you now, I have passion that I will just die with it. 
after my education, even before I completed, I began working with the bank, Barclays Bank. With Barclays Bank, I, I graduated of IT, but was doing customer care. But that taught me a lot to, to love people, to deal with people, to interact with people. And I learned a lot with uh, handling people of different calibers. Some people could look at you and see this ugly thing. You know, the, the, you know that attitude that people show you? But I knew how to deal with all sorts of people, and up to today, I can deal with all sorts of people. What am I driving at? My passion is moving forward. I then joined an NGO world, Build Africa. With Build Africa, I worked in Uganda and rural Uganda, rural Kenya, they were supporting primary education. And uh, they, they built classrooms where children studied under uh, trees, um, uh, they gave uh, books, uh, they taught teachers, they helped parents learn how to save and loan money, and I was a communications officer. But whenever I traveled there to shoot videos, write stories, and uh, make fundraising materials, I would be left in tears because people are really poor in Uganda, in rural Uganda. You go to school, there's no water, the teachers are starving, the children are starving, there's no toilet, there are no books. They, some of them even come almost half naked. And then I said, now, if supporting primary education is like this, why, wh what after, what after this? And it, to, me, to me, Build Africa is doing a great job, yes. But if I was a minister of education of Uganda, I would say primary education parents have to pay and secondary is for free. Why? Because after primary education, children get married. I mean, there's the parents can't afford money to take them to school. After primary seven, the poor parent cannot afford educating the children. They are sent to marriage, and we complain as a government, children are getting married. Go to the grassroots and know exactly what's going on. And so, on 1st of January 2012, I posted on my Facebook wall and said, my mission for 2012 and beyond is to connect rural Ugandan girls with women, uh, with mentors from across the globe who will educate and mentor them. Remember, I already had lots of network of people who followed me and said, Beatrice, how do I mentor a girl? Then I had three girls in my head, in my village there. Then I went to my village to look for them. They were all married. I was very heartbroken. I said, now, this is trouble. I began just looking anyhow for girls. So by the end of 2012, we had 40 girls in good secondary schools here in Kampala, Mukono, and in Toro. These are girls who had never sat in any car to go anywhere. Most of these girls had never even gone to the town where they are born. These are girls who had, if they have four knickers, two are rags. They use papers and leaves, just like my sister talked about it here. She touched me a lot. The girls that we support came from such a background. And that's what's going on still. And following my, let me take you back to my background, <laughs> why I do this. I come from a family of 12, seven brothers and three sisters, me the fifth. I mean, f seven brothers and, and five sisters, including myself. But I've lost all my seven brothers to HIV. And I've lost two of my sisters too. One was giving birth, and actually her daughter is somewhere here. And the other one died of HIV. So when that sister of mine died when giving birth to twins in Mengo Hospital, she left two girls who needed help. And so that's how I began to look on the internet. I was still at campus. How do I find help for this girl? So an American started, decided to sponsor her. She was in P7. Now Priscilla is finishing at Macquarie University Business School with a bachelor's in, <laughs> say it loud, <laughs> wherever you are. Leadership and governance. I can say this project is making three years, but it is 10 years old already. Seeing the impact of the education of my own niece, I decided to help other girls. Last year, we only took more 35, I mean, more 35 in 2013. And 
2013 and 2014, we had up to 108 girls and boys. We are supposed to sponsoring five boys and 103 girls. Why more girls? Because they're the ones sold off for marriage each and every day. I am telling you the fact that I see every day, I go to the villages almost every month and every week. If I ha have any issues to, I mean, updates I want for our website, for the sponsors, you hear cases of parents selling their daughters. Sometimes you even hear a phone call from some strange girl and say, I'm going to commit suicide because my parents want me to get married and I don't want. And we received 1,612 applications last year. And we couldn't help much. There are many girls who are walking in my old shoes. I really want to help them, but I can't help much. But I thank individuals from across the globe, from as far as Australia, Europe, and the United States, who have been giving us support to sponsor these girls in school and to make them have a changed life and empowerment. It's not about pen and paper. We go ahead and tell them, during holidays like this, last year we sent the girls, there were 70 in, in 2013, we sent them and said, go to Yoko village, teach 20 girls about the dangers of early pregnancy and early sex and early marriage. We had over 812 people reached out to. The girls did it themselves. And as they were educating others, they were also educating themselves. Because you know, during December holiday, people are excited, go for Christmas, dance, pregnancy, HIV and all that. So as they educated others, they were educating themselves. And right now, as I talk with you, there are 108 are each planting mango trees in their homes. The target is 50 mango trees in each of their homes. And the maximum is 100, I mean. And after planting, we'll work with their parents to craft them. So after some time, we'll have them have fruits that can be sold to educate more siblings in their families. When we just started this organization, the men couldn't even sit near their wives. <laughs> if you tell a man, hold your wife, he will just, <laughs> and then, you know, with our sponsors, we tell them, come and see the families, come see the girls. So we have had like 38 people from different countries over the world come to see the families, see the school, see the girls. So one, one time, there's a group who came from Australia, and we had a community dinner together with the girls and their parents and the community. And the MC said, now it's time for food. Uh, I remember the women were the ones cooking. Eh? The, men were, the men were just sitting there like this. Said, the MC was a man. He said, now it's time to serve food. Men first. Then the other team from Australia came in and said, no, that's a lie. It's women first. <laughs> so the women came and they ate first. Then the men ate. And after eating, they said, now we are going to dance. Every man hold your wife and child and dance. So they danced with their wives and children. That was the first time they hugged their wives. That was the first time they hugged their children. The village community, the rural people are not poor because they don't have, but because their eyes are not opened. They are not reached out to. And it's you who can change the people in your own community. Don't wait for a stranger to come to your village to educate your people. It's a total shame. What did you go to school for? Selfishness. <laughs> wake up, Ugandans. Wake up. Wake up and help your own people. Stop waiting for poor people like me to go to your village and help your people for you. I am speaking to members of parliament. I'm speaking to all those people who drive Prado, whatever car is new in the mode, I don't know. Wake up and help your people. It's not about going to the funeral and buying rice and whatever. Build a school. 
sponsor children. Education, education, education is the only way to rescue the grassroots Uganda and grassroots Africa and the whole world at large. If it weren't education, I wouldn't be here. And I want everyone to be educated and empowered. Not, your only, not only your sister and brother, not your wife, not only your child. Seek out to that extra person, empower them. We will change the world through education. Thank you.